Today's project, uh, we're going to upgrade the backsplash of our fifth wheel camper. Uh, presently it has just the factory wallpaper on there. And what we are going to replace it with are these peel and stick tiles. Stay tuned and we'll show you how it's done. These are the materials and tools that we're going to use for today's job in replacing our backsplash. We have the peel and stick tiles. We have some shop towels and some degreaser. I have a square, a pen or a pencil, some nitrile gloves. I have a couple of rollers that will help me apply them and make sure they stick well. A tape measure. A square if I didn't say that already. I have some spray adhesives. Now spray adhesives is typically not required but based on some of the reviews I've had uh, sometimes the tiles will come unglued and so this is just a little insurance. And we have a contour gauge and the contour gauge I'll show you how it's used later but when you have those uh, unusual corners and cuts uh, that contour gauge will help you make that cut. The last couple of things we have in our list is going to be a box cutter and a tape measure or a ruler. Put it back after the peel and stick is installed or I may just go ahead and just use silicone. What I used to remove this is just pretty cheap. I used a, just a regular can opener and I stuck it in there to loosen that piece of trim from the corner and get it out. Uh, the reason this works so good is because it has that little curved edge on it. And so it helps you get in there where a flat screwdriver would be able to see that. Second option we can use, uh, we had some of these brads that were in there pretty small. And we couldn't really get a hold of them with the pliers. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach those in. And what you want to do you want to make sure that that brad is flush with the edge. I can still hear it. So I'm going to get a little bit more. There we go. That's flush. Now the first thing you're going to notice about these peel and stick tiles is that the very end here is jagged and that's designed so that they will interlace with each other. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut a line to start off on the edge straight down towards the end of these tiles. That way we have a nice straight edge to start off with. Now here's where my square is going to be used and comes in handy for cutting the tile. By using the square I can look down the edge of the tile and I can see that I'm placed on there straight and so I'm going to have a good 90 degree angle cut on my tile. Uh, and to cut the tile I'm going to use my box cutter and just go straight down the edge. Now this is the edge that I cut with my straight edge and that's going to be where I start. It's going to go right up against the edge of that trim. Nice and straight cut. And then we're going to move in the wall and we're going to start moving that way towards the corner. You always want to start your layout from the part that's going to be most visible. Now in this place the corner and the edge are going to be basically the same but the, the edge of the wall is going to be closest to the eye and so that's the part we want the best. Direction state is to be sure that your surface, your wall surface, and your air temperature is at least 70 degrees or above for at least 12 hours. Um, you can see here that the outside temperature is about 73 and the interior surface or temperature is about 77. 
Now this is the air temperature and not necessarily the wall temperature. You want to be sure that your wall temperature is at least 70 degrees. So here we have the second piece installed and uh, it's not too difficult. The main thing is that you want to be sure that you start square. Sorry about that. You want to be sure and start square so that way this line is going to be square with this line when it goes down. And we're going to keep on going. Back to this corner, we're going to go ahead and trim one edge. In this case, typically, I would start at the edge of my counter right here and work my way to the right to the corner. But in this case, we have a ledge that comes right down with a special cutting, and then we have a board there that we're going to have to do some special cutting. So in order to keep my, my line straight, I'm going to go ahead and start from this corner and work my way up to this edge of the counter. I am tracing the outline with my contour gauge uh, of the wood knife rack. Uh, that way I'll be able to trace it onto the peel and stick tile. Okay, what I'll do is I'm going to measure from right here where I'm going to place the tile to the corner to get my mark. Okay, now I got this one cut around the cabinet. This was probably the most difficult tile I was going to have to trim out. And uh, I took it nice and slow and did a little uh, double check my measurements. And uh, I used my contour indicator to cut around the, the countertop. I might still need to do a little additional train, uh, tr trimming because uh, I cut a little bit long just to be sure I had enough material so I wouldn't have a big gap there. Um, I have noticed that on some of the edges they are starting to come undone and so what I normally do is along the edges of the tile I make sure I use a fingernail and I dig my fingernail in there and scrape it. Um, I also use the corner of my box cutter and that makes a really good tool for getting to those corners. It's rounded, it's not sharp, it won't grab it and uh, it does a really great job of getting into those corners and pressing down that tile so that it sticks well. Um, I have had to use some of the aerosol spray, not on the entire tiles, but I put some along the edges. That way I could be sure that they weren't going to be lifting later on. And this is the finished product. We have the backsplash completed. All it needs now is just a little bit of trim and some beige caulk to finish out. And it'll be, the project will be complete.